Right. So if you have read and understood, considering a critical care scenario, kindly tell me, how would you manage this patient now? Uh, well, uh, we will manage this patient according to secret protocol and we will approach through ABCD protocol and uh, we will see the airway and uh, secure the airway and then we go for the breathing. For the breathing, as the respiratory rate increase, so we will check any deformity and we will give the oxygen and prop up the patient and then we will go through the circulation and uh, uh, after... What do you do for circulation? For the circulation, we will start IV fluid. We will send uh, all the blood invest relevant blood investigations for the uh, and uh, we will resuscitate the patient first, and uh, and then uh, we will go for the relevant investigations. How would you resuscitate this patient? Uh, uh, well, uh, for in this case, we will start with one liter of normal slime. Yes. And or any other crystal eye, and uh, we will check uh, uh, all the uh, relevant things like blood pressure, pulse rate, urine output, and... Um, yes, the and, patient uh, has tender abdomen, and it's especially tender in the left iliac fossa. What are your provisional diagnosis for this patient? What do you well, expect? Uh, it might be uh, perforated diverticulitis. Okay. Or, uh, uh, or any uh, peritonitis, any um, ischem uh, ischemic um, colitis, okay. ne so necrotic enterocolitis. How would, how would your management differ now or would be influenced considering the patient's condition? Uh, well, uh, in this case, we will do some uh, relevant investigation to rule out the definitive diagnosis. Um, yeah, uh, first of all, we will go for radiological investigations after blood investigations like uh, blood CP, LFTs, um, uh, like uh, PTA, PTT, INR, and uh, RFTs. And then we will do the uh, uh, erect x ray abdomen as well as the chest x ray as well. And uh, what do you expect to see in radiological x-rays that you're asking for? Uh, well, in the case of the peritonitis, uh, we can see the air and the diaphragm. Okay. Uh, yes. This will tell you what. Patient also has heart rate, which is not uh, rhythmic. Uh, it might be... Uh, the rhythm is not rhythmic, yes. Yes, irregular rhythm may be uh, atrial fibrillation because of the sepsis. You've done this X-ray, not of this patient, but uh, what is this arrow showing you? It is showing air and a diaphragm on the is right there anything, side. Anything else that you can appreciate on the X-ray or this image? Uh, uh, yes, it, it also shows the cardiomegaly. And? And... Um, It's uh, the patient is in spine position. Maybe. Uh, this patient, do you think, is fit for surgery? What I'm trying to bring you is that this patient is undergoing abnormal heart rhythm. And if there is perforated viscous, definitely you need laparotomy. Do you think uh, this patient is fit for surgery as it is, or are you going to manage something? Are you going to do something? Well, init initially, we will manage uh, this patient. It comes under a uh, urgent category. So we will make um, the patient optimal for the uh, operation before. Uh, uh, so we will start uh, treating the patient. Uh, it, uh, we will start treating the cardiac issue uh, because it causes the, um, a lot of uh, anesthetic risks uh, in the surgery. So, Who would you uh, involve in the management of this patient? Uh, we will involve the anesthesia department, uh, anesthesia consultant, or uh, and um, cardiologist as well. And? And general surgeons. Uh, not, not cardiologist. Did you mention cardiologist? Okay. Uh, what if you have to operate on this patient? Who would you ask for consent? As the patient is uh, uh, confused. confused, so we will take a form four and uh, we will sign yes. it by two consultants, yes. as well yes. as uh, we will also do some video assisted, uh, con we will take video assisted consult as well 
So later on, we can show the patient in some cases. Okay, can you please tell me uh, what might have caused uh, atrial fibrillation or abnormal rhythm, uh, abnormal heart rhythm in this patient? Well, in this patient, it's most likely of the sepsis or my might be uh, because of the high, uh, any uh, electrolyte imbalance such as like hypokalemia. Okay. How should that be managed? Well, if the uh, we will start with the beta blockers if the ejection fraction is normal. If not, then we will start with cardioversions like um, we will start with amiodarone and uh, 300 mg uh, in 10 to 20 minutes, and we will give uh, and uh, we will repeat the DC shock, and we will give 900 mg in next uh, 24 hours, and uh, um, uh, we will also give. Uh, um, unfractionated heparin um, yes. for the uh, yes for the anticoagulant why to reduce the risk of stroke or any stroke. kind of yes yes very good okay right uh, how would you take care of the nutrition of this patient uh, well, um, in, uh, as we are planning for laparotomy so we will uh, keep NPO this patient and we will start TPN okay what are the complications of giving TPN? Uh, for a long period to elderly patients? Uh, well, it causes hypoglycemia or some cases hyperglycemia, then uh, uh, electrolyte imbalance, diabetes, and uh, uh, then uh, pancreatitis, and also causes um, intral uh, mucosal uh, atrophy. All right. Strict, yeah, uh, gut atrophy. Yes, suppose. Uh, you said amiodarone you'll give to manage the atrial fibrillation of this patient. How would you realize if there has been overdose and patient is, uh, you've been given, uh, you have been giving toxic dose to the patient and patient is showing side effects? Uh, sorry, can we back to this question? Okay. All right, uh, if you'll, all right, okay. Then uh, did you tell me how would you manage the respiratory rate of this patient? Uh, uh, yes, uh, for the respiration, we will uh, give oxygen and uh, uh, with the rebreathing uh, mask and we will prop up the patient. And uh, if required, we will also um, start uh, ventilation um, as well. If okay, sepsis, normally uh, atrial fibrillation may not be the cause of or because of the uh, cardiac reason. There could be other reasons as well. Can you mention a few? Uh, yes, it might be because of the uh, uh, diabetes, age, or uh, it might be hypovolemia, hypoxia, and sometimes it causes a hyperthyroidism and fever as well, electrolyte imbalance. Yes, and one sepsis that you were talking about, septic cause. Yes. All right. If you'll take the ABG, Bell has gone, but uh, one last question. Please. If you'll take the ABG of this patient, what would you expect to find? Uh, it will be metabolic acidosis. Good. How would you correct that? Uh, well, for the metabolic acidosis, uh, we will give uh, um, uh, hydration as well as sodium bicarb. Can you, uh, it says atrial fibrillation on this ECG, but just suppose if it wasn't there, would you be able to read the ECG in, in front of you? Yes, um, and there is uh, absent P wave yes. as well as uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, QRS complex is irregularly placed. Yes. Uh, so RR. heart rate is not regular. Uh, RR interval is is not like regular. irregular. Is yes. not regular, so yes. So if you look at this, would you be able to calculate the heart, uh, heart rate? Yes, in this uh, in this case, uh, we will calculate QRS complex in thirty large blocks. Very of, good. Means for the six seconds, and then yes. we will multiply that for ten minutes, uh, ten uh, seconds, and then uh, uh, we will calculate the heart rate. Good, good. Thank you.